Good morning, everybody. Michael the Maven. In today's episode of the Maven Nation Photography Podcast, I am going to discuss the number one reason I believe photographers go out of business. Workflow ratio. First, let me say thank you to our sponsor, Proven Nutrition, who makes a fantastic energy drink called Corfit. I've been using it for two years now. I love it. It tastes amazing. It's a pre and post workout energy drink loaded with amino acids, herbs, low glycemic, and it tastes amazing. Proven Nutrition has agreed to send you free samples if you cover shipping. Thank you to Proven Nutrition. When we're talking about workflow ratio and how it applies to you, I would even go so far as to say it applies to everyone. From the moment that you wake up to the time that you close your eyes at night in your bed, what we do during the day is what we produce. Productivity. And we're limited. We only have so many hours in a day. How can we maximize what we're doing. So I wrote a book two years ago, it was published called The Efficiency Playbook. This is a chapter from one of the beginning parts of the book. Check it out if this topic interests you because I'm about to blow your mind. In the 1930s, there was a Russian scientist named Georgi Claus who was giving a lot of credit for this. There were other scientists who studied it clearly. And he summarized what is now referred to as the competitive exclusion principle. What he did was he took two sexually incompatible organisms and he put them in test tubes with a certain amount of food and resources. And what he discovered was that over time, one of the species would dominate the other and he would tweak some of the resources and then the other one would dominate. So this was very interesting to him in terms of the question, why would two competing species have such an easy way of dominating each other when one of these resources were tweaked. And the conclusion that he came to was that the organism that was able to use those resources more efficiently or reproduce a little bit faster would always win. Why and how does this compare to photographers? Let me illustrate this when we're talking about the example of a subway restaurant. Hypothetically, pretend you have two subways working literally next door to each other. That would never happen. but you have the same product, the same prices, the same location, generally speaking, about the same speed of workers, but we're going to change one variable and one variable only. The person working the register in subway A is three times faster than the subway register worker in subway B. So what this means is that as customers are coming in, there is going to be a longer line in subway B. And as that line gets longer and longer, fewer and fewer customers are going to want to go to Subway B. Well, there's this other Subway right here. There's almost no line. And what this means is that Subway A is going to have a lot more sales because one person was three times slower than the other. That's, that would be the only variable, all other things being equal. Obviously, Subway A would have greater costs because they're putting out more product, but the sales would also be much higher. So when we're talking about photographers, the question is, when you have two photographers competing for a limited resource, customers, all other things being equal, we're making the assumption they're using the same gear, they're shooting in the same locations, they have the same skill, same prices, everything is the same, but the only one difference between the two is that photographer A has a very good workflow ratio and photographer B has a very poor workflow ratio. So that begs the question, what is workflow ratio in the first place? I define workflow ratio as the number of hours shooting compared to the number of hours processing or creating the product for the client. So if you're shooting for one hour, how many hours are you preparing those images after the shoot? My definition of a good workflow ratio is one to one. You're shooting for one hour and you're post processing for one hour. My definition of a really bad workflow ratio is one to nine, where you're shooting for one hour and you're spending nine hours for every hour of shooting post processing. And this is where the beginners get into problems is they get into Photoshop or Lightroom. Maybe they don't know what they're doing and they lose a lot of time in those images. And so what happens is they start to get this bottleneck of images. There was a photographer I worked with in Alabama that they would shoot all their summer weddings and they would do all the post processing at the end of the summer. And I discovered that if I was able to turn my images around quickly, my clients were happier. I got more referrals. I didn't have to stress. I had more free time. So I spent a lot of time working on my workflow ratio. And at one point I was down to one 
hour of shooting to a half hour of post-processing. So the question then becomes is how in the world can you improve your workflow ratio? Very important. I think in the beginning when you're just learning your software, obviously there is a learning curve, but after a certain amount of time, you have to be able to get yourself to the point that you can make these decisions very quickly. And there are two major ways that I can think of to improve your workflow speed. The first is automations and the second is strategic planning. When we're talking about automation, I'm talking about things that happen automatically. It can be a computer program such as an action or a preset that if you can go through hundreds or even thousands of images with just a few clicks, it's gonna save you a tremendous amount of time. I think beginners kind of caught up in editing every picture. I think that's a huge mistake. I have some great people that I work with who help me in terms of some of the editing and cleaning up we do in the videos. It has made a huge difference. The second major tactic is strategic planning. When I say that, what I mean is, what do you tell your customers versus what you actually deliver? I tried to tell my customers I would get their photos to them within two or three months, but then I would actually do it in a couple days. They were always thrilled when I do this because if you promise within a couple days and then it takes you a couple months, they're not gonna be very happy. There is also what you promise your customers in terms of what their expectations are. So if you're telling them they're gonna get 2,000 edited images versus telling them they're going to get 10 or 20 of the best images, that's a huge difference in terms of what your obligation is. There is also a tremendous amount of strategic planning that can help you in terms of your camera setup. So take, for example, YouTubers who are making videos on a regular basis. If you have your lights, your camera, and your microphone set up beforehand and they're ready to go at any moment, you are going to be far more productive than the YouTuber who has to set up the camera and set up the lights and set up the microphone. So you can see that workflow ratio not only applies to photography, it's going to apply to all aspects of your life. Another example I talk about in my book is that if you have a long commute, if you're commuting one, in some cases two hours each way, every day for work, you are losing a tremendous amount of time and that's something you might wanna look at and change your job if you have to because it's so much wasted time. Your whole system of waking up and what you do the moment you open your eyes, how much time are you spending on social media, all these things come into play when we're talking about productivity and workflow ratio. Something very important to think about. If you enjoyed this episode of the Maven Nation and productivity is something that you're interested in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you to Proven Nutrition once again for sponsoring this podcast. We wouldn't be watching this episode without them. Corfit is an awesome drink. Try it out. You will not regret it. I am Michael the Maven. What productivity topics do you want me to cover in my next video? Let me know in the comments below and I hope you're having a great day.